Okay, hi there. So in this video, we're going to be talking about auth in Supabase. So we're going to look at sign up, sign in, sign out, session, and on auth state change. We're also going to look at the magic link here. So um, basically, users can just put in their email, and then you get they get a magic link in their email, and they sign in like that. And just so you know, there's also third-party providers, so OAuth, like uh, here you can see GitHub, Google, GitLab, but we're not going to get into that in this video. Okay, so let's go to my, let's start a little app. I added Tailwind CSS and some uh, routes. So basically sign up, sign in, and the magic link. Uh, here you can see it just linking to different ones. Um, need an account, it's a little confusing, but um, okay. So here we are on our sign up page. Let's start with that. So here in Supabase, it's pretty simple. So basically I've, I'm binding to email and password up here, and then when I submit the form, prevent default, and run this function right here from Supabase. Okay, so it's just auth.signup, you pass in the email and password, and that will sign the user up. And then you get returned here, user session and error. Okay, so if there's an error, I just alert error.message like that. Okay, but let's see what we want to do with session and user. So they sign up, and now we have a session and a user. So let's look at that. Let's see what that looks like. So console.log use uh, user session and error just for good measure. Okay, so let me just put in some gibberish and let's see what comes out of here. Sign up. Okay, so first one right here, we have user, but then you'll notice here we've got null and null, which is session and error. And just so you can see the error, let me sign up again. The error sending confirmation mail. Okay, so uh, the reason that session is null is because the default is that the user has to confirm their email address. Okay, so if we come into our console right here, go to authentication and then settings, you can see here, uh, I guess you can disable sign up, but what we wanna do is disable email confirmations. Unless you want them, you can do that, but um, for simplicity, I'm going to disable this. So I'm gonna save it, and then let's try that again. Oh, once it's saved, should be safe soon. Okay, come back here and refresh this. We're gonna put in a different gibberish something and sign up. Okay, cool, so now we have, this is the user, and then right here we've got the session. And notice that the session contains the user. So in general, we can probably just ignore this uh, user and just deal with the session. Okay, that, that's what we care about is the session. So uh, I'm gonna ignore user, and we're just gonna take session here. Now, Svelte Kit also has something called session which is like the session, and it is from app stores. So this session is a writable store, and it just uh, contains the session. So after we've signed up, we wanna set this session to our session, yeah. Okay, but they have the same name, so we're gonna have to convert this session here to something else called sesh, maybe you can think of a better name. But here, once they've signed up, let's set our session equals sesh, okay? So you see what they're, we're doing there? So we get the session back from this, and then we set it to our Svelte store so we can access it in different components. So for example, here in layout, let me uncomment these and we'll be able to see the session here, um, what the object looks like. Okay, so let's try that. Gonna put in another gibberish name right here and sign up. Okay, cool. So um, I guess I didn't quite, okay, this is really long, so I didn't quite put that there. Let me see. Let me add this class here, just width 96, so we can actually see it. Uh, overflow, scroll. Okay, there it is. Okay, basically the uh, access token is really long. So this is the session, and we can access this now from anywhere in our Svelte app just by importing session from app stores like that. Um, what do we wanna do next? So let's see if I refresh it, if it's still there. Oh no, it's gone. Okay, and the reason for that is because it's refreshing and there's nothing in session just by default and we're only setting it after we've signed up. So we wanna fix that. What do we, uh, what can we do about that? So let's come here and look at on auth state change. So I'll get back to sign in, uh, it's basically the same, and magic link later, but let's look at auth on state change. So let's copy this right here into our code. So basically when we go from being logged out to logged in, this function will run, and vice versa. So here in layout, let's put it here. Uh, so we based on auth, oh, we guess import, import, super base 
from lib slash db. Okay, so superbase dot auth on the auth state change console log this. So let's see what that looks like. Uh, so for example, we're logged out right now, and now I'm signed up, and we see signed in and the session, which contains the user. So event session. So the event was signed in, and this is the session. Okay, great. So the only thing is that this doesn't run on load. Okay, so for example, we have the session right here, so we could just set the session, our uh, Svelte store session, to, again, let's call this something different, sesh equals sesh. Okay, and now we don't need to manually set it right here because this will trigger a auth state change, which will trigger this function, and it'll set the session for us. Okay, and then if we log out, it'll also trigger this function and set the session back to null. Okay, so that, that handles um, all of that for us. The only issue is that unexpected token, yes, that that is one issue. Um, this is maybe because the Svelte kit wants us to do this in the browser only and not on the server side. So uh, import browser from, I think it's oh, app slash env. Okay, so this will tell us if we're in the browser or not. So if we're in the browser, then, oops, run this function. There we go. Okay, so let's come back to the browser. Yeah, so we'll see. So we should have a session from Superbase, but it wasn't actually populated here. So we're going to do another thing. So um, we are going to use auth.session. Okay, so here we're going to do superbase.auth.session. This will return the session, and we can set it here. Okay, so um, it's kind of a bummer that this doesn't run right away when you, like, instantiate it, but um, it doesn't. So basically, when the user comes, we get the session and we set the session. It's either null or someone there. And then from there on out, if it ever changes, we'll set it there again. So that's what we're doing right here. And that should take care of it for us. So let me see. There we go. So, um, okay, yeah, and I did start getting this error. Fortunately, I, can, I don't know why, but mm, let me know if you know what this is about, but it doesn't seem to affect anything. Uh, so uh, fingers crossed. Okay, but anyway, you see that the session is now like automatically here. Okay, and um, that means we probably want to figure out our sign in and magic link. Okay, so basically sign in is basically the same. Um, and actually, we don't even have to touch sign in because it's almost literally the exact same, but signing in with the sign in function, um, and then setting session gets taken care of automatically. And then let's look at magic link. So um, let's go to magic link. Now, for example, let's go back to Svelte Dummy, one of my email addresses, dot com, magic. Sign up requires a valid password. OK, it's because I'm putting sign up here instead of sign in. So with the magic link, it's a sign in, even if this person doesn't exist yet. So. Um, Let's come to users and notice Svelte Dummy isn't here yet. So now we come back, Svelte Dummy at gmail.com, magic. Okay, and I didn't handle any UI logic, but oh, you see it just went up. Cool, your magic link. And log in. Cool, so now I'm logged in like this here. And I'm on the index. Cool. So this logged me in. I now have a session with my email spelled dummy, and I didn't have to put in a password or anything. And if we come here and refresh, you'll see spelled dummy. There I am. Uh, this was before when I needed email verification, but we turned that off. Okay, come back to settings and notice site URL, localhost 3000. I don't know if this is the default or if I set it like that. I can't remember, but that's what brought me back to this page after my when I clicked my magic link. Okay, cool. So we did all that. Basically, we just need to figure out logging out. And we might want to kind of figure out how to do protected routes. But um, I don't have a great answer for it, but I'll, I'll show you something anyway. Uh, OK, so here we have index. And we have something, uh, something here, index, index here. 
Okay, so basically here we can implement the sign out. So it's pretty simple, uh, sign out. Okay, so there's not much to do here, but um, yeah, basically you don't pass anything in and it'll just return back to you an error if there is one. So you could do like I did here and just if error alert. By the way, what does everyone think about alert? I, I, before it was, I was told it's terrible, but now I'm told it's not so bad anymore. Um, so, you know, if this were something production, I'm, I'd probably turn this into some kind of modal or something instead, but, uh, you know, it's not too bad for now. Okay. So anyway, that's the sign out button. So now if I come to index like this, I can sign out and now it's null. We'll see like that. Okay. But we want it to redirect us. That, so that's the last part of this here is how do we get it to redirect us back to the sign up page here like that. Um, and that is the tricky question because I'm not 100% sure. So I wanted you to take a look here at Tumblr and Twitter. So just to see that um, even Tumblr and Twitter don't have this quite perfect. So like ideally, when I come to sign up, it would check on the back end if I'm signed in or not. And if I am signed in, it would just redirect me to my home page and vice versa. Like if I try to go to the home page, but I'm not signed in, it would just automatically return to me the sign up page. But if you come to Twitter here and say, like, if I want to try to go to, uh, I think it's called home, you'll notice it flashes for a second and then redirects me to login. So it's actually doing it on the client, the redirection. So look at it again, boop, you can see up there. Uh, similar with Tumblr, so it's a little bit different, but it's like a different strategy. Let's say I want to sign up, just put in some gibberish and sign up. Let's say I'm 33, I'm not. And then I say next, getting to know Tumblr, skip this, and I'm at dashboard. Okay, so I'm signed in on dashboard. And so, you know, if I'm not signed in, I probably shouldn't have access to this page. But if I log out, uh, log out, yes. And then I go back to dashboard, you'll notice that I'm still here, but I'm not actually, I mean, Everything looks the same, but if I try to do anything like text, it's just, it's not working because I'm not signed in. Okay, but it still shows me this page. So anyway, I'm just trying to convey to you that's not such a big deal if um, you know some of your routes aren't redirected um, based on if they're protected or not. Uh, but I'm signed out here, I just can't do anything. Okay, that's how it would be in Superbase 2 if um, you know, maybe you let them go to the main page, even if they're not signed in, they just can't do anything. Okay, but I mean, most people aren't trying to like hack around the URLs, um, so it's not a big deal. But anyway, let's see what we can do. So let's come to layout, and one thing we can do is if browser, so when we load the page, we can basically just say, um, okay, is there a session? Uh, okay, is there a session, question mark? If there is, then go to the home page. Otherwise, go to uh, the sign up page. Okay, so that's what that's one thing we could do. And the go to comes from go to from app slash navigation. Okay, just so we go from one to like uh, programmatically go from one to the other. Um, does it not like this? We'll see. Okay, so for example, right now we're not signed in. So like, let's say I try to go to the, oh, okay. So this is one issue, look at that. I don't know why it's doing that. If you do, let me know. But um, I, for whatever reason, need to set this timeout. Okay, so this does feel kind of hacky, which it is, but um, this seems to work. So, okay, remember I'm not signed in. I try to go to the homepage, it redirects me to sign up. Okay, and then vice versa. So let's say I sign up and now I have this here and I try to refresh to sign up, it redirects me to index. Okay, this is like the app. Um, the reason I didn't immediately do that is because we need to put that same logic in here. So on uh, auth state change. Okay, so now it works. So now when I sign up, it'll redirect me to sign up and then here when I sign up, it'll redirect me into the app index here where I can sign out. Okay, so that's one way to do it. So I'll try to cover the other ways to do this in a different video, but basically you have to set up something with cookies and set the session in the cookie and then read the cookie from the back end and then 
do a redirect in the load function based on if the user is signed in or not. Okay, but we'll do that in a different video. Let me know what you thought of this one and have a wonderful day. Bye.